Hey guys, what's up? Today we have a series between Soulwind and ABR for Smogon Classic Finals. For those of you who don't know, that's a best of five in the old generations. Black White, DPP, ADV, GSC, and RBY. Game one is going to be in Black White Overused. And I'm also here with my friend Kingler. Hey, how's it going? So, yeah, this is going to be the first game of the set. Um, for those who don't know, Kingler has played a lot of these old generations at a high level. Uh, RBY and ADV especially, so... I'm really glad to have his input here, but the first game is going to be black white. Um, any thoughts on team preview, man? Uh, I think like Celebi is probably like the it's going to be like MP pass. I I, I, I can't really tell what the Celebi is going to be, but I think it does pretty well here. Um, yeah, I I agree. I think it might actually be nasty plot plus recover with two attacks, and. We're both seeing pretty much going for the same start. They're both Stealth Rock plus Protect score with knockoff, so it's a bit of a stalemate to start the game off. Yeah, and uh, Solon has better hazard control with the spin X curve, but ABR has a lot of magic guard, obviously, so... Yeah, really, ABR only has two Pokemon to take spikes. Yeah, it's sort of corny to say, but it, it really depends on how they play it. But the Celebi can be, like, really threatening if Skarmory gets, like, chipped or something. Now, one thing to note is that both people have psychic types that can be win conditions. For example, ABR has Ryu Nicholas, which presumably on this team is going to be combined. Whereas, if you look at Solowin's team, the Celebi, as it's not Stealth Rock, because Gliscor is Stealth Rock, it's probably going to be Nasty Plot. And if you don't see something like an Alakazam or a Keldeo or a Thunderous T, then it tends not to be Baton Pass. It could be Baton Pass T-Tran, but I'm wondering if it's either going to be a Nasty Plot like yeah, Sweeper... I seriously doubt it's Badon Pass. Cause yeah, it could know. potentially... One thing that just crossed my mind is it could be Swords Dance plus Baton Pass into Excadrill and Tyranitar, maybe. But I'm thinking it might just be... That's really cool if that Scarf Sand Force Extra with the plus two boost. Yeah. It might not be Scarf me still, but it's still like a nice idea. ABR finally conceded and went to his rear Nicholas, and that baited the Heatran and then back to Gliscor. So that's a good double switch there from ABR, I guess. I mean, I don't really think it gained much because... He's just going to go back to Glisco after protecting. Yeah, I mean, he knocked off... Uh, Solver knocked off ABR's uh, Ryun's leftover, so I think long-term it's a lot less of a threat now. What set do you think the Ryun is, by the way? Is it, like, Bolt? So, that, like, I'm, almost com I'm almost sure it's got combined with Recover. The question is the recover recovery moves. Now, if you see Ice Beam on Gastron there, then I think it's more likely they're not going to be Psychic, but I don't know if it's Focus Blast last necessarily because you have Alakazam. Sometimes they run, like, Psyshock plus Focus Blast, of course, but you could also see it with Thunder or with potentially Acid Armor or, I mean, there are a whole other sort of options. So I'm going to say it definitely is a Psychic move, given what we've seen so far, but that's really all I'm sure of. And it's yeah. also worth noting that this being Brave Bird is good for ABR because it's going to be able to punish Rapid Spins with Brave Bird damage. That seems pretty good. That Brave Bird did nothing. Though. That is a physically defensive drill, so all of a sudden, that's actually really good for Sol and the fact that it's not Rocky Helmet. Yeah. Now, physically defensive drill, for those of you who don't know, isn't very common in Black White, but it does do great against things like Tyranitar. You could tank a Drain Punch from Balloom if you need to spin it a pinch. Even tanking Earthquakes from Uninvested Lando T to Stealth Rock set, so it's really bulky. Yeah, it seems like a really good cool set. I've never seen this before in Black White, but I, didn't, I haven't really played well, that much of it. The thing is that both these guys tend to lean a bit bulkier in modern black-white. So with ABR, you see teams like this, or with Jellicent over Gastrodon, pretty routinely. But for Solwind, he tends to be a bit more proactive. So seeing something this conservative for him means that he was basically saying, okay, ABR is going to bring me to a longer game, so I'm accepting that fate right now. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm fine just bringing this team. I feel it has enough longevity to counteract whatever he might have planned. And I guess that was just the, the mindset for Solwind, and I think that's fair. Because there's no way ABR is going to bring, like, Drag Mag or something, like, blatantly offensive, if you will. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, it, it adds up, too, because, like, they use bulky stuff, but they also like using, like, weird text. I, I doubt they'd bring, like, full standard to a final. So, him use, so when using something, like, physically defensive drills so sort of makes sense, because... Yeah, and when it comes to these guys, it's worth noting that techs aren't always flashy offensive things, but rather sometimes they are defensive ideas that can work out. So, for example, for Solwind, you see Fizzly Defensive Exedrill. For ABR and both Solwind, you see Stealth Rock List Score, which, while both guys have it, it's actually not very common in Black White at all. So it's really cool seeing these things. It's also a bit weird seeing Solwind consistently respond to the Rear Nicholas with the Heatran. I don't really know why that's the case. 
I wonder if to Roar Tran. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Now, is he going to stand on the gas drum and go for a toxic? Or no, he's not. And APR scattered that out anyway. Okay. They're really just feeling each other out, and they're playing very quickly. Are you at like turn forty right now? Uh, uh, I'm at turn like fifty-one. Oh boy. Hold the phone. These guys are playing way quickly. Okay. Well, on the screen, we're basically just seeing them switch back and forth for like turn after turn after yeah, turn. Really, like, nothing's happening. Yeah, nothing's happening. It is in fact Roar Tran. Okay, so that hypothesis is confirmed. But Alakazam doesn't want it sash broken, so he's gonna go right back to the Glyph score. For those of you who don't know this gen, Alakazam is virtually always gonna be focused sash. And that's because in black white you don't have the same defensive presences as in a newer generation, so therefore keeping the sash intact actually lets it get two hits off, and that's really devastating in the later game with spikes. So yeah, but they're basically just trading turns now. It's just nothing really over the top. The is basically like uh, kind of an automatic win con for Soul Win because Lava Bloom threatens basically everything, status on everything except Gliscar and Rio Nicholas, and yep. sort of just win turn turn keep getting spike, uh, spikes and stealth rock damage. And the fact that ABR has no hazard clear means that he's definitely the one that's on a time here. So he has to get something done with his Zam or his Rio Nicholas. Now, here's the question for you, Tingler. It, it, let's say, hypothetically speaking, that this Roar Tran roars in the Skarmory a million times over, the Skarmory dies, and eventually ABR is down to the last Pokemon Rio Nicholas. Now, this might be 100 turns from now, not right now. But if that's a defensive Excadrill, as in it can't offensively muscle past the Rio Nicholas, do you think there's a chance that ABR's Rio Nicholas with Combine can win as the last Pokemon? I think I think there's a chance, but like it doesn't have leftovers, and it's probably gonna run out of recover PP. Like unless it has near full recover PP, I don't really see see it muscling through the extra drill. Okay, that's fair. Psy shock plus thunder or something. I, I, I think it might be psy shock plus thunder. I really don't see him being hit power ice. So yeah, it's like focus blast or something, which is mm -hmm. probably an set, right? Um, it could be a, I mean, you could pretty much make anything work with Rio Nicholas, honestly, in this metagame right now. Yeah, that makes sense. I've seen, like, Psy plus, uh, HP Ice, but I don't think I've seen, like... I use Psy plus Hidden Power Ice in SPL, but people have used Psy plus Thunder before, and I, get, I, I think that might be it for ABR, if only because we've already seen Ice Beam Gastrodon, and we have Skarmory, which tends to handle the ground types, so I just don't think it's Hidden Power Ice. I don't think Hidden Power Ice would make as much sense, so... Yeah, that's probably true, like, with Gastro and Bliss Guards. So, on turn 73, we see Celebi only take 32% from an Ice Beam, which basically means that it has to be specially defensive. Now, the question is, is it going to be a specially defensive booster? Because a lot of them run specially defensive sets with Nasty Plot plus Recover. That could be a thing. Hmm. Oh, well, we're not sure yet. Something like Nasty Plot, because uh, uh, otherwise it's not really easy to justify. We see... ABR knocked the leftovers on Solwyn Skarmory, which is semi-relevant, and Solwyn finally says, okay, we've been doing this for 75 turns, let me get my spikes up. Because I, I think that's a smart play, and I think that Solwyn is really favored here. Yeah, and Stetson is probably going to have to make a bench to make progress, so it's like... Yeah, I think he was just making sure he could feel everything out before he felt comfortable doing so, and in these long games, you really you lose nothing in doing so. And one cool thing is, ABR is trying to waste every single Rapid Spin PP, so he's only going for one Hazard at a time, really. But I don't think that's going to be enough, unfortunately. Yeah, there's very little chance it's going to be enough, because even if you add Spikes and Stealth Rock PP, it's like... It's the same. It's 32 plus 32 equals 64. So if he ever set up one Stealth Rock plus Spike, which he's already done once or twice, then it's going to be enough. And I'm just wondering if he's going to try and PP still out the whole extra drill, but I don't think he has enough ability to do so with the stealth rock damage and spike damage being forced on things, so yeah. Yeah, there's almost no way he's going to be able to do that. I mean, just from switching Gastrodon in, let's say you get it in, you you lose, what, like 20, 25? Oh, there's a crit. Okay, if he froze there, that would have been big, but no, no freeze. Um, yeah, okay. This is just looking like ABR can't win the game, barring some real nonsense here. Yeah, this looks pretty over to me. I mean, are you around turn 100 now? Uh, I'm at 108. Oh, God. These guys are playing at, like, Godspeed, guys. I'm sorry. We're, we're only at turn 100 right now, but there's no real progress being generated at this point in time. 
So what I'm trying to think about is, is ABR going to try and last mon a win condition? Or is ABR just going to say, okay, let's see how much progress I could get before I last mon the win condition? Because in all seriousness, I don't think he could actually make any progress on Solwyn's team, but I don't think he loses anything in trying to like fish for freezes on that Celebi, for example. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's also the worth noting that he has used five recover on the Celebi. So if he could waste all the recovers, then maybe Gastrodon could start chipping away. But the thing is that Gastrodon himself has used uh, a handful of ice beams already, and it's taking spikes damage each time. So yeah, Celebi has more recovers than Gastro has ice beams. So maybe his long term plan is kind of hope you wear out the DDR somehow and. Um, Oh, it is Psyshock. That's interesting. Yeah, it is Psyshock, um, as we're going to see momentarily. I think he's going to try to hope to somehow wear out the T-Tar um, and just try to sweep it because mm -hmm. there's really no other... Well, it's also worth noting that that's probably going to be a Scarf Tyranitar from the Solwyn side. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I mean, looking at his team, there's nothing quicker than Excadrill. I think that having something to help revenge kill things like Tornadus and Thunderous Tian Rain would make a lot of sense on this team. As now we're back in the kind of stalemate between the Gliscors, but ABR wasted a Stealth Rock PP with Spike Up, so yeah, that's helpful for Drill because it could spin them both off later. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually at being uh, Scarf Dar. If so, that probably opens the game up a little more. Yes. Especially considering it's SR Gliscor, yeah. Yeah, and for those of you at home wondering how big of a series this is, the server had 150 people before it started, and now they're at 400 people. It's almost 400 in the battle, so everyone wanted to see this. This is like a big deal. <laughs> Why is he switching out Gliscar, uh, Gliscar out of Rionicles? It doesn't seem like... So, I think he just doesn't want to let it get too out of hand with Combines, and he also wants to try and get a rapid spin off on Drill. Because the thing is that with Drill taking resisted Stealth Rock damage and having leftovers plus Protect, he doesn't really lose much in just kind of doing that. Um, he, it, could try, he could try, like, I guess, knocking off if, uh, on a potential Skarn switch or something. I just think that... Yeah, I mean, staying in for one or two turns isn't the end of the world, but I think staying in for any more than that might be a little greedy, basically. Yeah, it just doesn't seem forced, so I think there's a lot... Now, it's also worth noting that Protect has a limited number of PP. For example, Solwyn's burnt through half of his... Wait! A knockoff on the X drill there is pretty big. Wait. Wait, what? Why would he let the extra get knocked off? Oh my god, uh, let me just skip. Uh. On turn 137, ABR knocked off Selwyn's leftovers on the Excadrill. Now all of a sudden, in the long term, this favors ABR, I think. Sorry, my net crashed. Uh, no, it's all good. Tell me when you reload, but I'm just going to talk over the game for a minute. Basically, we're seeing some progress now because... The extra drill got knocked off, and then, oh my god, the Skarmory got crit for Solwyn by a Tyranitar Fire Blast. So, all of a sudden, not only is the extra drill forced to take chip, but on top of that, ABR got a kill. So now it's 6-5 in favor of ABR. He, he predicted the Reuniclus to double back in, because that happened the last three or four times, but ABR conditioned him into believing that, and then stayed in that time and went for the safe knockoff, and that was a really amazing play by ABR. And now, all of a sudden, Solwyn has to try and win the game with, like, the Celebi, I guess, because, I mean, if it's not a nasty plot Celebi, then does he really have any win conditions? nasty plot, it kind of uh, counters Reuniclus, but... Uh, it, it need Ryu needs to like lose more recover PP because it will actually win the calm mind war with uh, Psy Shop. So yes, Ryu kind of threatens to long term sweep uh, Soul Wind. So this is really scary now. Yeah, now I think ABR is actually favored, especially if the Alakazam has Signal Beam or Shadow Ball yeah, for the Celebi. Yeah, I think ABR is in the driver's seat here, which is crazy because just. Two, three minutes ago, we were both saying, you know, I don't see how ABR can go through this, but it just took one turn, really. One turn in which ABR got the knockoff on Solwind. Solwind got a little greedy, no offense whatsoever to Solwind, and then that was really punished there. Yeah, it's understandable. I mean, if it's hard to play that. these games perfectly over such a long period of time and stay patient. Yeah. It's also worth noting that with leftovers knocked off on Reuniclus, we're seeing Chip consistently on it. Yeah, it still has a lot of PP, though. It does. Now, I wonder if this Heatran is going to get broken. Yeah, it is broken. Okay, so it's like specially defensive, but plus one Thunder does take it out. So that's good for ABR. 
Speaking of good for ABR, uh, he can now get spikes up, right? Yeah, there's a layer on turn 161. Um, and trans lava plumes are only doing like 25 to 31% to ABR, which is really not much. Uh, and, and faster than Gliscor, so he just subbed up a few times, and now it's... Uh... Uh, now trans in again, turn 176. Okay, yeah, I'm just, I'm on turn 170 now. Th these guys are playing at god speed. I mean, this is the fastest I've seen a game played. Like, for example, this recording is at 15 minutes right now, but we are at turn 180 almost in the battle, so. Jesus Christ. The drill did get a spin off, but now the drill is only at 57% for me. It might even be lower for you. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a 57%. Yeah, but there's Stealth Rock and Spikes up, so all of a sudden, there's no way the Drill can continue to spin. He's faster than Gliscor, made me think, like, maybe uh, this thing can try sweeping, but so when that, like, 7 protects, it seems pretty uh, easy to start it out. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, no worries. You can mute. Um, anyway, just what's happening right now is basically that Solwind is just roaring things around, but the thing is that the only Pokemon that are really susceptible to the roars are the Tyranitar and the Gastrodon, and those are APR's like two least useful Pokemon in this game. So, for example, the Tyranitar just went down, but there's no Latios, there's no Reuniclus, there's no Alakazam for it to potentially do well against and even Pursuit Trap. And the rest of the Trans PP is kind of going to be negated by A, Gliscor, B, Recover Reuniclus, and C, the prospect of Gastrodon just spamming the 12 Recovers. It's going to be really hard-pressed to use those Recovers, though. So, it's worth noting. Anyway, we see a substitute there. Um, it, EQ is breaking them, and yeah, as Kinglet said before, it is a faster Heatran, which is interesting. Fast sub roar. He might try and stall out the earthquakes. There are only five left, actually. That is really important, as there are eight substitutes and seven protects left. So, all of a sudden, earthquake PP is going to be a problem, as ABR predicts to protect and subs up there, but he didn't get that right. So yeah, he's knocking off into the protect there. This is a really, um, really interesting long game here. Hmm. Uh, I'm back. Yeah, so ABR is stalling out. Sorry? He only has one EQ left? Yeah, he only has four left for me, but I'm sure he's going even further for you. But basically, the Tarantula is going to sit there forever at this point. Yeah, he's using his Earthquakes. Uh, I think he's going to be able to take a few EQs away from the unit class, but... Uh... I'm, not, I'm still not sure uh, long term if uh, Solon's favorite year. Though actually, um, we talked about last month Rio Nicholas, but last month Celebi could actually. Yeah, I think last month Celebi versus last month Rio Nicholas might be what it comes down to because ABR does have Brave Bird on the Skarmory, but the Skarmory, I don't know if that's really going to be able to take, say, a plus two hidden power fire from Celebi too well. It might not even be hidden power fire though. So keeping on that. Psychic. I think um, if Skarmory is switching in on a plus two Psychic from 64%, there's like, there's some wiggle room for uh, Sorbonne to do something if Zam's dead or something. Yeah, so, I, I think a lot depends on A, what ABR's Skarmory spread is, and B, what the moves on Alakazam is. Now, knowing ABR, it's almost definitely not Focus Blast on the Alakazam. He uses Grass Knot for Tyranitar and Hidden Power Fire a lot for Exedrill, so... Oh, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of what I was thinking sort of hinged on Solvin getting a, a Focus Blast missed on Zam, uh, miss on Zam but... Uh, yeah, he doesn't even have Focus Blast, so he can't actually kill the Tyranitar from this range, but also Grass Knot should 2 off after Spike, so there's that. Now, the thing is, I don't think he could break Heatran Substitute with the Alakazam, which is worth noting. That's true. It's... Uh, it's more so about just stalling out the lava plumes. Like Tran has in total. Uh, I'm up to speed now, and it has like 16 PP in total. So I think it's going to be uh, pretty easy for ABR to stall it out. Yeah, I mean it's just a matter of not going Gastrodon on too many roars, because he just went one on there and turned two seven two eighteen, and that's really good for Solwind right there, because now the Gastrodon's at 67 percent and has to take full hazards. So. Yeah, if it comes in once again and gets roared, Lava Bloom kills on the next switch in. Yeah, and or a Lava Bloom crit might even kill after this point. And although he only has three Lava Bloom left, so soon this T Tran's just gonna be the Celebi. Fight are gonna be like super important. We're gonna get to a point where this runs out of PP, and then the game's gonna come down to some really like suspect stuff. 
Now, one thing is that Solon can only get the Celebian safely on, like, the Gastrodon and maybe the Reuniculus because he doesn't want to take Brave Birds. He doesn't want to take knockoffs. Like, all that could be really troublesome. So Solon has to time this really well. Yeah, and in the end, if Zam is, like, Signal Beam or something, it might not even matter. I don't think it's Signal Beam. I think it's more likely they're not going to be Shadow Ball or Hidden Power, Fire, slash Ice to hit it. It's more likely to be uh, Shadow Ball. Uh, but and for those of you that don't know, in Black White, now, Sam runs a Focus Sash set. Now, he usually runs Psychic, Focus Blast, and Hidden Power Ice, but on this team, especially with ABR being the pilot of this team, it's a lot less likely to run Focus Blast just because ABR doesn't like Focus Blast, and Hidden Power Ice doesn't make as much sense with Skarmory and Ice Beam Gastrodon, which just got roared in in my screen in turn 227. So because of that, the moves it has are a lot less like certain. It's fine that a Selby comes in here now and presumably to recover, yeah. But then it switches right back out. But yeah, in the case that Shadow Ball, uh, Zam can't really uh, reliably revenge Celebi. So uh, ABR needs to be, the one thing he needs to keep in mind is just having his Skarm at high HP. Yes. Uh, it's also him. why he switched the Skarmory out of the Gliscor to not take a knockoff. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think ABR has played a lot better than Solwyn thus far, and maybe I'm a little biased because ABR is my boy, but I think Solwyn letting the drill take that knock was really what kind of hurt him here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I Wait, is he going to flinch through to Skarmory? Wait. No, he does not flinch through to Skarmory. He, he lets it roost. Okay. And now we're seeing, um, are you on turn 240? Uh, this thing froze again. Oh, okay. Well, basically, what's happening is ABR got the hazard spun, but now the drill is only at 42%, and ABR proceeded to set up Stealth Rock, and now his Rio Nicholas is back in, but the Rio Nicholas only has nine recovers, so he can't do this all day. Uh, when, uh, when Exo was ironheading Skarm, what, was it at, like, 50%? So it was the, the the drill was at forty two percent because it's not taking leftovers and already spun at that point. But the Skarmory was down to thirty percent, and then Solwind instead of going for two more flinches because it's a defensive drill, so it needed two of them to get it. Especially because I believe it's it's um it is sand force, but it's not attack invested given that damage. Instead of going for the flinches, he didn't even bother. He just switched out to the Heatran. Yeah, I think he probably should have gone for his flinches. Yeah, because the thing is that the Heatran getting like leftovers getting up to one hundred percent was cool and all, but. At the same time, that's not winning the game because the train only has so much PP left. And because of that... Yeah. Anyway, we're actually... Um, we're at a point where actually Solon is finally thinking. His timer is down to 180, which is crazy considering how fast it clicked. I mean, we have seen 240 turns in under 30 minutes, which is just amazing in my eyes. Yeah, I don't think their timer is shown on like almost any turn so far. Yeah, up until this point. And, I mean, this is one of those games where you're going to, like, have the replay lag off Pokemon Showdown. And he goes for Thunder into the drill. That's a really great play there by Solon to bring the drill in. Now, is ABR going to go for the Psy Shock? No, he's just going to go to the Skarmory on the Iron Head. Okay. Now, this is good because in order to spin, ABR is going to get a Brave Bird off. Instead, he goes for the Roost, though, as the Heatran comes in. Now, the Gliscor... Yeah, he only has... Six, seven, eight, nine PP left on Tran. So the Gliscor comes in here. Now he's got to be scared of Ice Beam from the Scarf Tar here. It doesn't kill though. Yeah, if he had Ice Beam, I don't think Solomon would have done this. Oh, he went Stone Edge. What? Yeah, this this seems grim. Yeah, for Solomon, this seems very grim. Especially with the Scarf. He's probably going to switch out to Scarf. He doesn't want to take a knockoff. Yeah. Unless he's okay just setting spikes up. Well, it seems he's not. Okay, we see the Stone Edge here. It only does 41 on the Earthquake, which does. 58%. He's going to protect the next Stone Edge off, I presume. I don't know if he's going to want to risk the crit or if he's going to go to Skarmory or what. And I think he can just EQ here. EQ yeah, I think you just EQ to take it out. He, wait, he goes Skarmory anyway, despite that. And that does a lot of damage. I don't know about that, ABR. I think ABR messed this up. Wait! It lives! Well, also, if this is Scarf Tar, then the max damage is definitely like 45. So, yeah, as you see, that one does 40. Also, the reason why he switched is because it's out of Earthquake. The Gliscor is out of Earthquake now. Wait, why would you go Gastrodon? What was this? 
Actually, you know what? I just don't think he, I, I think he just tossed out the gas tracks. He didn't want to get crit. I think that was it. He really just wanted to stop the stun as quickly. I mean, if you're doing it this way, why not just switch out the Gastro from this car? No, because I think he couldn't stall enough PP doing that because it was in 2 kill range. I think this was proper. Well, maybe not proper, but it wasn't the worst thing he could have done. Yeah, it definitely wasn't the worst thing he could have done, but I just think it was non-ideal. It was a bit sloppy, but at this point in the game, I think we're all a bit sloppy because we've seen 250 turns of... Skarmory switching into Gliscor, switching into Gastron, switching into Tyranitar, switching into Rear Nicholas, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. The Exodrill comes in here on the Skarmory, which lays into Gliscor, but the Gliscor is out of Earthquake PP. So that's really good for Sol, and he can just spin into this pretty freely. But he goes Iron at Wait, he's another chance to flinch. He's got another chance to flinch. Here comes. No flinch. No flinch. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's going to get to use all of them either at this point. Three spike up, which means that Exca gets, like, two more opportunities to switch in. Yep. Um, which is going to be a problem. Yeah, the spikes being up is huge to pressure drill. And honestly, ABR could just start going for knockoff into it if he really wants to. Actually, ABR only has three knockoff left. That's funny. Are we going to see ABR Brave Bird into Yeah, we do. And now it's at 7%. So now... Next time it's forced out, it's going to basically be dead. Hmm. Yeah, oh, you see flinches. Wait. Is this going to be a miracle for Solwind? Uh. Uh. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. This is getting a bit laggy. This is kind of crazy. On what? Okay, oh my god, the Tran tried Ice Beam that whole time, that's so funny. I, I, Gliscor would have lived anyway, because it's max special defense given the rolls before, but... Yeah, that, that's so hilarious, though. Like, he could have froze the Skarmory, for example, so... But yeah, it's clear they both were thinking the same thing, because ABI did end up going Skarmory, so, uh, I mean, that's what Solden wanted to catch, so... Doesn't yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's just... I'm pretty sure it's just Scarf on the Tar, honestly, but I don't know for sure at this point. I mean, it was weird. Yeah, it definitely looks like Scarf Tar from the set and from the... Now, end. here comes Celebi, which honestly might be his last stand. He's going to go Skarmory on it as we see Recover. We've only seen Recover in Giga Drain, but it only has nine Recovers left. And now all these spikes are going up, and there's nothing that... Well, really nothing someone can do. Is also, we're going to see Stealth Rock here, too. All right, ABR makes the... Uh makes the safe play and goes less car and the knockoff. Yeah, now he gets the rocks up. Yeah, I'm up to speed now. We're at turn 80, 282. Yeah, same. And now he brings Yuri Nicholas, and he, I, I see no reason why he shouldn't just come mind and sweep here. But he seems yeah. to be scared of the cell. Okay, it is Nasty Plot. So, now the question is, what is the last... If, oh, it's Earth Power last, isn't uh, it? Was it, was it the because that's... I mean, the, the BP to the heat run would be interesting. Well, not really, because it only has two Lava Plume left. <laughs> no, I mean, like, as a concept. Just yes, as a concept, I agree, but I still think it's got a second attack. I just think its second attack is something like Earth Power or uh, Shadow Ball that can't dent the Skarmory. Because keep in mind, for those of you who don't know this generation, Shadow Ball is resisted by Skarmory. The, the Ghost Hitting Steel thing is Generation 6, so yeah. Good game, got impatient. Wait... Wait, no, <laughs> so weird. All right, well, that is that. ABR is now up 1-0 in what a lot of people regard as Solwyn's best tier. In fact, the tier that he's probably the best player in the world at, so that is really good for ABR. That's, yeah, that's, gar if you're Solwyn, you can't be happy right now. I think both of Yeah, Solwyn's probably tilted off the face of the earth. I mean, look, I love, I love how good Solwyn is as a player. for sure. Solwind is obviously a very skilled player. I think everyone can agree to that, but I don't think that was his best showing. I think that was a pretty free win if he didn't let the extra drill get knocked off there. Okay, I don't want to say free. He could have gotten unlucky, but had he not gotten unlucky, that would have been pretty free. Um, yeah, I think, I think we'd take him um, in that game because I think, uh, like, outside of these circumstances, the uh, Giga Drain uh, NP Celebi... Um, Unless Leon's like completely boosted, it still does like fine. And, and Solon had the the long term game with the roar he ran. Um, but it, 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 he, 
KBR always could have maybe pulled ahead with the with the Al Kazam. So we don't really know how it would have played out uh, without that knock succeeding. Um, yeah, that much ended the game on the spot. Um, and it just turned the game around. It was uh, very interesting to see how ABR. Yeah, I mean, win. I think the conditioning aspect is really important because realistically, we saw him go Rio Nicholas the last two or three times, and then all of a sudden he switched it up. And I think that ABR's really only misstep in that game was you recall when he went Skarmory and risked a stone edge roll? Yeah. I think at that point he should have just fired off the Gastrodon, honestly. I think you were right. Yeah, that that seemed like uh that seemed like the big standout error from ABR to me, but otherwise he played really well. It sort of reminded me do you remember that ABR versus uh TDK game from like SPL nine where ABR doubled like fifty times. Oh yeah, that was the most crazy end game. ABR just tried and said, "Okay, I can only win this game by making progress through entry hazards and switching repeatedly and giving myself a position." And eventually, the game devolved into fifty fifties just because ABR got so many turns right in a row. It was so crazy. Yeah, that's what this reminded me of because ABR sort of. Um I wouldn't say he is regarded as the most crazy player, but when uh, it's his only way out, he's pretty good at sort of finding a way back into the game. And it's something I sort of associate with his playstyle a lot. But in that he's basically safe, but he can play really aggressive when he needs to. Yeah, I agree. And I think ABR's versatility as in... Of course, he's okay just sitting there with the Skarmory, clicking Whirlwind, clicking Spikes, you know. But also, he's able to make those plays, and that range goes a long way towards success. And for those of you who don't know, if Abraham wins this, he's basically going down as the best of all time. He already has three official tournament wins in the individuals, and that's already only he and CL have that. So he'd win his fourth, also his second of this year. It'd just be unprecedented levels of success. Yeah, it's like, a, I think I said this in small tours, but like... ABR might be the only person having a good 2020 because this year has just been awful. But ABR in the last yeah, ABR basically 2020 is the year where ABR just destroys everyone and everyone else just feels yeah, like dog shit. Okay, game, game two is DPP OU. Now, for those of you who don't know, Solwind actually won the DPP OU Cup. ABR has some nice performances in this tier, but Solwind is probably favored here as well. It might be close, but we see an interesting lead from Solwind. It's going to be a flygon, which presumably indicates scarf. Whereas ABR in leads Swampert, which could be banded, could be offensive style through Rock. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it looks like it's got the 240 defense with the relaxed nature, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Ice Beam, Roar type of set that you've seen in the analysis. For those of you that like came back and tried to learn DPP years ago, I remember looking up all the analysis pages and like, oh, wow, that Swampert runs a lot of physical defense. And given that U-turn damage, I'm inclined to believe that's it. Yeah, I think um, this... I think lead matchup is probably uh, the most emphasized in this tier. Like, this is definitely the, the tier where... I'm yes, absolutely. Like, because the tier, it can be offensive. Like, yeah, it's not it's not as bad as some people sort of exaggerated to be, but it's definitely, like, the most important tier. So, ABR getting the lead here, definitely. definitely Those Toxic Spikes definitely. can be really good for Solwind, as well as the Spikes depending on how ABR can react to him. Like, I don't think he's going to have a spinner in the back with a Swampert lead. I don't think he has a Starmie on this team with the Swampert plus Latias lead. So those might be able to stay. So does ABR have a Roserade of his own to observe the Toxic Spikes? Yeah, or? Like he has a pretty offensive team. Um, though this Latias set doesn't seem like an actual offensive one. It seemed like some sort of... No, I, I think this is a finesse Latias. I almost wonder if the Thunder Wave is meant to set up for something like a mixed Dragonite or a Machamp. Or a source banded Tyranitar. Or even a Carmine Clefable. Yeah, a Carmine Clefable seems pretty like. Now, as for Soulwind, this is almost definitely, yeah, this is gonna be one of these to toxic spike balances where you're gonna see a Suicune or an Empoleon plus a Flygon plus a Roserade plus a, a, a Heatran. And then you see like something like a ghost type like Gengar or Rotom. And then the last could potentially be something like Jirachi. Um, so those type of teams that have been used a lot in tournaments like SPL actually died out in 2019 a little bit. So seeing it again is pretty cool. But yeah, no guys like Solwind and August have used them before, and they're really solid. Um, yeah, this was the Roscoe. Uh, this was a team Roscoe used. Uh, similar team Roscoe used in SPL eight. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, I've and seen it with Gengar with Gengar, and I don't remember the last I used actually. 
I think it was Jirachi, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I know it was the second steel type. It was either Jirachi or Bronzong, but I think Jirachi makes more sense. Anyway, bringing that Berlumin on Surf means that he doesn't have a great answer long-term to Kuhn. Yeah, from the Surf damage, it pretty much looks like it's an offensive Loom and an offensive Suicune, if I had to guess. But I'm, I'm surprised uh, Sermon switched out. Uh, does that mean he doesn't have Ice Beam? Yeah, it's probably going to be a, a, a mono attacking Kuhn. It could be a Vink Kuhn, which is sub protect surf combine, which doesn't really see much usage in DPP, but it's a devil with toxic spikes. Yeah, it was sort of. It was discovered in Gen 6, right? Yes, by Vink 12612. It was discovered in Gen 6 UU, but then everyone started using it in OU as well, which is so funny. And yeah. Yeah, it's actually sort of gotten into every. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've seen it sporadically in DPP. It's funny how those trends work. For example, another one of those was, I don't know if you remember this, Kingler, but back in black-white, when Lando T came out, nobody used Scarf. But then when Gen 6 came out, everyone was using Scarf Lando T there, and it trickled down to black-white, which is just so funny how that happens. I think I remember this. It, it was just when I was starting out, there was a lot more defensive Lando T. And yeah, and even in the early days, people used, like, Double Dance with Rock Gem and stuff like that. So... Yeah, and... Uh, it pretty much over the course of BW. It's pretty much. I think it's pretty rare to see any sort of non-scarf Lando. Yes, like, people have used leftover Stealth Rock a bit more recently, but Scarf is more the most common still. All right, and there's a lot of switching and uh, sort of posturing, but uh, yeah, Solon's got all his hazards down, and ADR's gotten a lot of chip on the Roserade, but otherwise, like. I mean, the Roserade has done its job. It's not going to check the Berloom in the long haul because Berloom has physical attacks and Roserade's physical attack is complete dog shit. I think literally just kills Roserade. I remember switching my Roserade. Yeah, no, Roserade is not living, and I think it's more likely they're not going to be a superpower variant, but still. Dude, imagine if ABI just happens to have a spinner in the bag. It doesn't really look like he does, but that would just be such a big fuck you. Yeah, that would be. Um, we are already at the almost 40 minute mark of the series, just showing how long these guys are going. And this is going to honestly last all day at this point. <laughs> this, yeah, this, this seems like that here we go again meme, because yeah. not a turn has either of them uh, shown their timer, and it's already like 44 turns in, and I think this is going to be like a 100 plus turn game. Yeah, I got to VM my RU open opponent, because we were supposed to play at noon, and that is not happening. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, are you open against uh, Loki? Oh boy, how'd that go? Yeah, actually, I won, but I also lost PU open to King Kedot because I literally. Uh, uh, game two, I used a Fletchender and I didn't realize that they use a new set now, so I used the old, like, itemless acrobatic set. Oh. Uh, heavy duty boots with dual wingy. Dual wing beat, yeah, that makes sense. Oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah. I won game one and then I just. Bleh. Yeah, no, I'm still in um, I'm still in UU and RU, but I've gotten pretty unfortunate in others. I got Gary Oak in round one of NU Open, so that's when you know it's rough. Oh boy, he's a he's a stone cold killer. You don't want to play that man. He's dangerous. Dude, he's so aggressive. He's a very good player. Yeah, he's a great he's a great player. Um, he's just like sort of in the eternal spirit fashion. Oh yeah, I, I could agree with that. I think he's a bit better than Gamma in modern day, but yeah, no, they're both they're both very aggressive. Hmm. Well, anyway, so it's worth noting that we're seeing Heatran get PP stalled for the second game in a row. We only see it at nine Lava Plume. Um, we do see the Latias only at 10 recover, though, and each Lava Plume probably does, like, 15%. So 15% plus 12 minus leftovers. I mean, I guess it adds up. But also, there's no reason for Solon to attack anymore. He's still getting damage off the burn. ABR doesn't want to let something else take Toxic Spikes. I, I think this game favors Solon pretty heavily, honestly. Mm, yeah, I, I'm still worried about Clefable because... Uh, I don't think it's Clefable. I think if it was Clefable, he would have went to it at this point. I think in, in the back, he has if, something like... Look at, look at the bond on the opposing side. If I had Clefable, I'd want to keep it in for as long as possible because it doesn't really look like 
Solwind has anything concrete for the Latias. Like, I don't, I, I don't think we're going to see a Tyranitar or something in the back. And no, I don't think Solwind has a Tyranitar at all. In fact, I, I think that ABR, one of his last two Pokemon, is going to be another physical, like physically offensive Pokemon. And looking at how he's played this, it's not going to be something like a Flygon that can potentially absorb to be immune to Toxic Spikes or Gyarados or Dragonite. It's got to be something like, uh, say, I'm a Champ or a Tyranitar, I think. Perhaps. Because he's clearly scared of letting it switch in on all these entry hazards, especially Toxic Spikes. Because he could have came in in a Protector, and he could have came in before the Heatran came in. I just I feel like to pursue this stalemate, that means that his last Pokemon are just not ideal for the circumstances. Yeah, he's uh, he's bleeding a lot of recovery PP, and I it doesn't seem very ideal for him. So probably have to agree with you there. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say Machamp because, like, seeing Machamp on a team that's not Paris Spam with Ordia Berloom seems weird, but, like, it, it's the Pokemon that makes the most sense to me. That and Tyranitar. And I don't know if he's had Tyranitar because I feel like he'd have went to it already at this point. Machamp would kind of make sense, though there is a Berloom redundancy. Um... Yeah, but I almost wonder if he's going for this, like, physical spam to try and overwhelm Solwind. Yeah, the only other thing that, that makes sense to me is, like, Maybe a Clefable or Tyranitar, um, cause, uh, but he does have a Jirachi, so it's, yeah, DPP is hard, man. Okay. Yeah, DPP is hard. I mean, of the tiers, I find this, like, one of the easier ones to play, but building in DPP is a challenge, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So, for those of you still watching this, this series, that's basically a Marathon Erodian game, too, um... ABR, for those of you who don't know, made it to the semifinals of Classic last year, and Solon made it to the final of Classic last year, but he fell to McMegan, someone who made playoffs, but I believe fell in round one to XL. So, I mean, just some familiar faces. These guys are some of the best of the best, but unfortunately, the being the best of the best right now requires sitting there for hundreds of turns and just... Oh, wait! An explosion! Wow, he put all of us to sleep and then just... Like and now, unless ABR has a rapid spinner, spoiler, there's no way he has a rapid spinner at this point. Because ABR would have spent a million times. That Latias is dead. And now the Suicune is going to potentially try and get a sub up on this. I mean, I see no reason why why he'd provoke this otherwise. That's why Suicune, I think, uh, 16 minus 25 minus 6 uh, would be like 35, 29. And he'd be at like 41. So, plus one Suicune definitely, I think, gets... I think he's going to sub here, and then he's going to try and, like, surf twice in the bloom, or maybe come out on a protector. I don't know. Yeah, subbing, subbing here is definitely the move. Um, but, yeah, I guess ABR is going to have to show us what he's got. Yeah, no, I think that Solwind is probably going to just win here. Yeah, okay, I think Solwind is going to win here. <clears throat> I think this might be over by turn 100. Guys, this is a miracle. This series might have just gotten interesting. Well, yeah, it's probably going to be 1-1. One, one. Now, the thing is that both ADV and GSC, in my opinion, favor ABR, especially GSC. So, going to be pretty hard for Solwyn, but still, I mean, anything can happen. I should mention that there's a, like, there's a small chance Jirachi gets like a pad on Kuhn. If well, he's going to sub again. Somehow outplays. Because it looks like a uh, specially defensive Rachi, right? So, if he gives well, Rachi... It might be physically defensive Drachi with Eevees to live Dugtrio's Earthquake, especially... Yeah, I think it has to be, given the Magnezone. Going the offensive route, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but given the Magnezone, I also think that means it's a physically defensive Drachi, because look how vulnerable he is to Dugtrio. The Drachi can get trapped, the Magnezone can get trapped, the Berloom can get trapped, and if the last mod is Tyranitar and Machamp, then they can get trapped if they're weakened as well. So... Yeah, it, it, Fizz Def Rachi actually makes a lot of sense in that regard. Yeah, especially if you couple that with the fact that... and Oh, it is a match. Oh, my God. I didn't <laughs> well, there it goes. I don't think this is the answer, though. It's only got 8 Dynamic Punch PP, plus it's poison. So this looks pretty bleak for ABR. Yeah, this seems over. Yeah, this is 100% over, barring Solon, like having a... Um, maybe like a disconnect, which would be an obvious unfortunate. So I'm thinking Solon's going to win this. Um, now it's just a matter of what ABR picks, and I think that the pick is going to be 
either RBY or ADV, just because I think he wants to save GSC for later on in the set. But I've been wrong before, as we're seeing all the dynamic punch PP wasted. He's got none left now. I don't think there's any way to break this substitute, but he just goes for the surf. I don't know about that. I guess it doesn't matter because it's quicker than the Jirachi. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, after a really dominant win in Black White by ABR due to Solon making some errors, Solon comes back and plays a really great game in DPP and wins presumably 5 0 at the. Um, at the hands of a sub-combined Suicune doing... Yeah, it's 47%. So that's a, special, that's a physically defensive Jirachi there. And yeah, that's that. Okay. ABR says good game. Mog Punch breaks the sub, but Surf's going to kill. The Latias, which was boomed on, which was actually an amazing play from Solwyn there, is not going to be able to save him as it's dead to rocks. And the Pert, of course, is going to lose as well. So that'll be that. So now we're at 1-1. One, one. So what are your thoughts so far, Kingler? Yeah, this was a really cool team by Solwyn. I really like yeah. the... The weird heat grand set, which really put in a lot of work. Um, sort of uh, crippling the Latia, so sweeping with sweep. Mm. Mm. ABR yeah. team was perhaps a little cheesy, but I mean, Tire Spam can be really, really effective, so... Uh, yeah, and yeah. I like the fighters because Solon is known to bring Blissey a lot, so it, it was cool. Blissey or Clefable. It's weird because, like, I think I'd probably favor... Solwind, BW, and ABR, maybe a little in DPP. Uh, though actually, you could favor Solwind because he's been playing DPP. Yeah, Solwind has been on a kill streak in DPP. He beat me. He beat Mana, I believe. He beat. He, he won DPP Cup. And obviously, we're all like great players, but yeah, Solwind has been on top of all of us. So. For a long time, yeah. So yeah. It, it does make sense. But ABR still took one of Solwind's like, favorite tiers, and I think. Going into the older gens, ABR is probably a little favored. Yes. I think they'll take ABR in this series, but uh, this was a really important win for Solvin, especially because I think he can try carrying this momentum to like something like ADV, where he's still a really strong player. And I agree. I think, uh, like, mentality-wise, I'd say ABR is probably less affected by the momentum, momentum of things, and, and Solvin probably right. a little more. Um... So this this is really like I think this next game is gonna determine who wins the series, pretty much. Yeah, and now I'm hoping that for ABR's sake, if he picks RBY, he doesn't like get tilted <laughs> by RBY being RBY, because that would be really ugly. <laughs> well they're still thinking about what to pick. I hmm. feel like uh, it wouldn't be uh wouldn't be ABR if he didn't sort of uh uh, some ridiculous stuff that happened in RBY. Yeah, that is true. Um, well, well, we'll find out in a moment. That is for sure. Um, no, maybe, you know, Solvon could get lucky. Um, yeah. You know, no, I mean, my series against Solvon actually came down to RBY, and it only came down to RBY because I lucked him in GSC pretty badly, but he got a bit luckier against me in RBY, so it was pretty even. I mean, he deserved the series, no doubt, but he's a really good RBY player. No doubt about yeah. that. I'd say Solwyn and uh, RBY, ADV, DPP, BW is considered pretty elite because he is like he's played pretty much all of them at a very high level for a long time. Yep, uh, and now I, I know his GSC is considered a little weaker, but like it's compared to playing everything at an elite level. So I don't know how like it might just be an unfair criticism of him. So it really, I'd still favor G, uh, ABR because he's had like a lot more, I think, high level exposure uh, to GSC recently and in team tours. Yeah, I'd agree. And wow, this is taking a minute for them to decide in the game. Um, well, in the meantime, um, for those of you who don't know, they're both also in an ADV tournament. And ABR just confirmed it's ADV next, it's called Callus called Callus Cup. I'm sure you're familiar with what Callus Cup is, and it's basically an invitational to the best ADV players. And Solwind might not have ADV You're as like never his. Never inviting me into Callus Cup. Yeah, me neither, man. Fuck that. But anyway, yeah. um, he's mad. So I think I can say that. I think he he's not gonna watch this video and get mad. Yeah, I mean, look, I I love Callus, but. I mean, I definitely think I should have been invited to the plans so over a couple of the people. I mean, I beat Solon in our ADV game. Yeah, it just, um, yeah. I don't know why he quit Smogon the way he did. 
And it doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah, but anyway, um, so in that tournament, Kyle's Cup, Solwind might not be the best ADV player, but recently I believe he beat both Fix and Zamog, or at least Zamog, and those are some really great players. So Solwind might be um, improving his ADV play after falling to me pretty handily in our ADV game from my, my set against him. So maybe that's something to keep an, an eye on. Damn, Finch, uh... You gotta play ADV next SPL? I mean, I think I probably could do about as well as Zamog did this year if I get that same luck. And I love Zamog, but no, nah, I mean, that, that he probably should have been about even. I could probably go like 4-5 or 5-4 or in ADV if I really went all out. Okay, well, here we go. Um, right. Well, okay, Tyranitar and Zapdos lead. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. Closing the black-white game, by the way, is lagging my computer right now. That is so funny. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I was kind of hoping this was the... the Wait, game. so this means Doug Trio. He's a Doug Trio if he did that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is this is an interesting start. Zap, like, they don't usually do this, even on Zap Doug team. They um, don't, they, but this means that he probably has something that really wants to be Tarn Targon. So it makes sense sometimes. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah like that Lax. It could be a team with Lax plus Magneton plus Doug, although with Zap, I'm not sure of that. So I'm not sure, honestly. Yeah, He's in the Snorlax, so it's very possible that this is like, especially like uh, bulky with rest and sort of that set, like course body slam, shadow ball, rests. Yes. Um, judging from the team, it very possibly could be uh, that. And ADR goes Blissey, which is very like very confusing. Thing Blissey. This is sick. I okay. AVR is on his AVR stuff right now. I mean, I, I was thinking if he's going to it, then it's going to be Sing or Counter for sure. And it yeah, wasn't it's, Counter, it was Sing. Yeah, like, if, if Lax gets a course off there, it's really like, yeah, even, yeah. Like, that did 44, by the way. Oh, my God. That's a modest, sweet, that's a modest Blissey then. And, of course, he hits to Sing. What if, what if we see a double switch here? Okay. Sorry, what? I, I, can't, I couldn't hear what you said. No, I was going to say, what if ABR tries and doubles out here and leaves the Blissey low with the Doug Trio there? But thankfully, he didn't do that. Oh, oh boy. Well, that is why he trapped the Tyranitar. Yeah. This is definitely a rest lax, I think. That is really good. So, I don't. This is like an unbeatable coon now. This is so cool. What is the set? It's max HP with substitute, so it lives the size we toss from Blissey, and without sand to negate the leftovers, he's gonna just gain leftovers and outstall the Blissey. So is ABR gonna have something like say a Zapdos or a Celebi to try and outrun and break subs here? Uh, if he has Celebi, that'd be really nice. But uh, okay, well, this three concern is really sick. Um, I, I knew. The, I think it was a Nojama team with like this rain uh, this Raylands plus Norlax to get rid of Sand was like a no. -game. I think that um I think that the, the those three turns right there decided the game. I think that ABR can't beat Snorlax without Tyranitar. I think that Solomon's gonna win with Snorlax. Um yeah, I, I think the the sub CM Suicune is really uh was really cool here, but uh, Lax seems like it's. Well on its way to victory. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, last mon has to be something that hmm, it has to take advantage of opposing Blissey and Celebi, especially defense. I think it might be Doug Trio last. Mm, it, it make it make sense if it were Doug Trio. Doug Trio or a Hidden Power Ground Flygon, Hidden Power Bug Flygon. <laughs> I think that's stronger than Hidden Power Ground. I was say yeah, I know. Earthquake plus Hidden Power Ground. I think it's one of those. Okay, we're seeing curses, but wait. This could get risky with yellow magic here. Are we going to see a rest? We do see a rest. Okay, that's... Yeah, and he goes Swampert. And, uh, oh. Swampert throws it out. I don't see anything really pressuring Solwind here. That's the... Oh, okay. Well, there's the Duck Trio in. And it's Toxic on the Pert. So it's Surf, yeah, Roar, is, Protect, this Toxic, is presumably. Is this is that uh, Surf, Roar, Toxic. And the last could be Refresh, the last could be Protect. I'm guessing it's probably Protect because uh, Swampert's, uh, I don't really see them not running Protect, especially because this team, if it's, um, uh, if it's Flygon, it's probably okay-ish against Arrow, but otherwise, 
you sort of want uh, to have that foolproof rock track. Yeah, I agree. I'm guessing it has protect. Yeah, um, it's really weak in the pert, and the pert continues to come into the lax. I, I just don't think that ABR has a way to beat this lax without the Tyranitar, and it's a choice Bantar, presumably, since it killed his Aptos turn one, or it's just really offensive with Focus Punch. Going for Freezes is smart. That is the play. Yeah, the, fact that, the fact that he stayed on, on the lax while battered with Swampert sort of shows me that ABR's last is not well-equipped to handle Pert. He's going to get one more chance to freeze, and of course he doesn't get it. <laughs> Uh, it is Doug Trio. Here comes. No crit. Uh, Body slam. Yeah. It looks like unless Zapdos gets a crit here, but even then, can Z Zapdos can actually win the game if it gets a crit here. Uh, I think even Modest Max Zap wouldn't get it without Yeah, no, he needs a crit. He doesn't get it. Okay, now he's got chances to crit on the rest, though. Wait. Does it really matter? Uh, I, think, I think it does matter because... Uh, Wait. One more chance to crit here. He doesn't get it. Doesn't get past. Okay, yeah. That'll do it. Uh, Unless we get a max. Yeah, and even then, I mean, I don't think ABR can come back from this position. Lax has done its, its job, yeah, and ABR says good game. All right, I'm going to pause just to get my charger for one second until the next game starts. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I'll be back in two seconds. All right, yeah, sorry about that. Just had to get my charger. But um, Kingler was saying that we might end up seeing the dreaded RBY game five. Because GSC is ABR's best year. Oh, oh, my bad. Yeah, no, I just had to get my charger for 30 seconds, but yeah. So Kingler made up a really great point in that GSC is ABR's best year. And he just said, yeah, it is GSC next. Okay, so. Yeah, if I'm ABR, I'm definitely taking GSC. I can't imagine uh, trying to come back starting with RBY. Now, if I had to guess what ABR was using, I'd say for sure he's using a Golem. That's his favorite Pokemon in GSC. Oh, a golem. That's interesting. No, he uses the rapid spin set on these like random bulky teams. Like, do you remember his World Cup tiebreak against Lavos? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. Lavos yeah, he, he always loves these golem teams because it only it gives you the ability to get spikes off. And ABR is like of this like sacred belief that if you keep spikes off, you're gonna win the game. <laughs> spikes versus no spikes. Yeah, that's how he wins pretty much. So I'm thinking he's gonna be like. Yeah, uh, Golem's like I think it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty nice mod, especially because uh, you sort of there's not that many good speed spinners in GSC, and uh, if Cloyster has spikes plus rapid spin, it's usually quite overloaded. Like with something like Boomlax or just getting a toxic long term, it's not going to usually stick around. So having uh, a separate mod to sort of do that job is generally why. Like, Golem, I think, is pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Um, it really decompresses teams and gives you a lot of room. Does, like, Golem, uh, in a lot of senses, it doesn't really offensively do that much, aside from Roar. And aside from checking, like, non-EQ lax uh, pretty well, even even Toxic lax sort of just gets its Toxic off. So it has, like, these limited, sort of very specific things that it can do really well. Yes. It also um it also threatens out Raikou and oh and here the game started. We're gonna see Snorlax on Snorlax lead, so right off the bat, I imagine that they both stand and click double edge, or if one has lovely kiss, maybe that. Yeah, definitely. I mean they could be body slam well we see double edge in one and Okay, they both with double edge. Yeah, okay, that that is basically the handshake to start the game. <laughs> and now Cloister comes in for Soul Wind on Fortress. That's actually pretty good for um well, it's hard to say. Okay, he goes Toxic there. Another Surf on a Spike. Okay, this is a really weakened Fortress now. Hmm. He's going to Protect on a Spike? That's a great play there by Solwood, getting the Spikes up. Yep. I think Golem is likely, but now after seeing the Fortress, I'm less sure. Um, it might not be rapid spin now. Yeah, no, it could be it could be spin golem or spin star. Okay, it might be spin golem after all because well, oh well, now we're down to last. Yeah, okay. It could be last golem. Okay, this is good for it's a good start for Solwind. He's using an offensive team too, Solwind. Are you uh, are you in the last turn? Like, are you on turn eleven? Yeah, I'm gonna turn the fortresses in against the Steelix for me. Yeah. 
Okay, that's Hidden Power of Fire, I think. And this, oh, it's me. Oh, it's mean look. Wait, is it gonna be Roy Raikou for ABR? You think? He goes to it here, so yeah, okay. Uh, it could have been Roy Raikou. I mean, probably. If he went to, okay, well, he just booms on it. Okay, that means there's a Zapdos in the back for Solwind, I bet. Oh, and he goes to it on the Golem. Okay, so his Golem. Oh my God. He gets a spin off. And, yep. Uh, this game looks doable for ABR again. But uh, Sorwin uh, doubles uh, Cloyster aggressively on Snorlax, which means that it's probably Boom, and he's probably like... Oh, it's definitely Boom. I just wonder... Oh, it's Rest? I don't love that Rest. Uh, well, he gets to turn right there. What's he going to... Is it Sleep Talk? Oh, he is Sleep Talk. Okay, he gets Earth... Is he going to go Skarmory on the Boom? No. No, he, uh, he does go Skarmory, but Sorwin goes back... Yeah, no, it's a great play there by Solwind to predict the... Him to predict the boom and get the war, but now Golem comes out now. Because even if he goes like Golem or Fortress, like Steel's is pretty good there, like just in general. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. Did Earthquake kill from 48 percent against the Golem? Uh, let me uh, just. Uh, okay, well, either way, we see a Toxic on the Zapdos there. Um, uh, it was a roll. Uh, it's 45 to 53, so that was a very good chance at there. Okay, so yeah, ABR went Golem on the Thunder and then went to Snorlax on the Hidden Power. Getting Toxic Damage on the Zapdos is pretty big. I think ABR is playing as well, but he's kind of in a little bit of a hole against the Zapdos after that explosion. But he... Felix booms on Suicune, so um, we have Snorlax, Cloyster, Zapdos versus Snorlax, Fortress, Skarmory, Golem. But now Cloyster comes in. Is Cloyster going to boom into the Skarmory? It just surfs. That's a great play there. Okay. But the thing is, uh, yeah, Cloyster can't really do much. So even, I, I think booming there probably would have made a lot Wait, of Wait, Vaporeon, I think this Solwind's going to win this game. Acid Armor, yeah, I think that Solwind wins. Oh my god. Unless, unless Solwind crits, uh, this is going to be Solwind's first trophy. Yeah, unless we see a crit. And no crit, it looks like someone's gonna do it. Shit. Congratulations to Solwind and a crazy win. We did not expect that. Dude, this was so like so long in the making. Uh like the fact that Solwind got a trophy after all this. This was like an absolutely insane series. Yeah, and I mean it was crazy because Solwind, after losing his best tier, came back and won. In arguably his two worst years, ADV and GSC. So just uh, massive congratulations to him. Surely deserving of this. Really proud of him and the strides he's taken as a player. So congratulations to Solwind. And uh, any last words to wrap it up, Kingler? Yeah, I mean, after sort of messing up the first game in his best year, just coming back and like, I don't think either of these three games look very close at all to, uh, at any point. Like, maybe GSC did a little, but he absolutely dominated ABR in these last three games. And like, yeah, massive congrats to Solwind. This was yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, um, that'll do it, guys. 3-1 for Solwind, and not exactly in the fashion we would have expected, but after a very long, drawn-out win for ABR to start things out, Solwind emerges victorious in DPP, ADV, and GSC. Thank you so much to Kingler for joining me. I'm going to try and get this up later today, but yeah, guys, have a great day. Um, congratulations to Solwind, and peace out. I'm going to end it now.